this reminds me of us from last the... year. There's a question in chat right now about the whole mother thing in Labrys' story. The big problem with that being an actual character rather than a piece of Labrys' backstory is that how long ago was Labrys designed? I mean, we know she was designed well before Igis. And Igis was designed when, you know, Minato was eight. So at least, you know, ten years ago. And actually, that's just when Ever the Shadows got out. We have no idea when Igis was actually designed. So that could have been 20 years ago for all we know. It's, it's really hard for this to actually be relevant, I think. Anyway. Yeah, it's the same thing. She's really no different from us. Yosuke-san and the others laugh to acknowledge one's weakness in front of others. They must have earned their personas through the same ordeal. I can see now why their bond is so strong. The tension in the air evaporates, just as Labrys' expression softens. A familiar voice comes from behind. Is that Labrys? Everyone turns to look at the newcomer. Mitsuru-san, Akihiko-san, you're all right. <laughs> of course we are. I run towards them. Hey, I said you were the quiet one. Ne neither of them appear to be injured. I notice that Yosuke-san and the others are not surprised to see them. They must already be aware of the situation. Though they tend to react to their arrival differently. Uh... Who are these people and what the hell are they wearing? Oh man, a dude storming across the battlefield in just a cape? Oh, I am all about that. I'd say you've got good taste. Seriously? <laughs> Lapras grabs weakly at Don't my arm. Worry. I smile and nod. She still bites her lips in anxiety, but she is no longer afraid of everything. You're Labrys, correct? Labrys simply nods in response to Mitsuru-san's question as she walks up. There is a moment of silence. Mitsuru-san sighs it in relief that blinks it. I'm glad you're safe. <sighs> Labrys smiles back awkwardly. The look on her face helps dispel the tension in Yosuke-san and his friends. Mitsuru-san notices this as well. I step forward alongside Mitsuru-san to introduce ourselves and show our appreciation. It seems they have never met a Persona user who didn't awaken in the TV world. We spend some time discussing our respective circumstances. Teddy leads us back to the roof. They say that this was the place they used to enter and exit this world. Labrys, who still does not quite understand that she's in the TV, cocks her head in bewilderment. Yosuke-san and his friends gather around her and explain everything. She is shocked at first, but as she grows accustomed to the idea, she begins laughing. Relieved, I leave Labrys to them. I approach Mitsuru-san and Akihiko-san. I relay them to them all the information I have gathered on this case so far. I tell them the tournament, the tournament's host was Labrys' shadow, which had emerged from her, and that Labrys may have been stolen. May not have been stolen. She may have escaped on her own. She has the ability to manipulate people's senses. That would explain the signs of mental influence found in the hijackers. We were able to discover Inaba through her research. Perhaps she used the simple, the same methods. It would have taken time, but she was sealed away for over ten years. Although she was caged, it is. Not clear whether she was conscious or not during that period. She had more than enough time. Mitsuru-san and Akihiko-san, so no surprise. But they do let out a long sigh. In contrast to Mitsuru-san, who is lost in thought, Akihiko-san goes to the straight answer straight from the source. Labrys startles when he taps her on the shoulder. So when did you actually awaken? Akihiko-san's question is blunt. But... Labrys handles it calmly, knowing that it is the natural thing no, to ask. I can't remember. She is being honest. She had used her ability on herself. Not even she knew what she really was. But Akihiko-san seems skeptical. Having no memory of it also means she is unable Please, to deny Mitsuru -san, it. Please, Mitsuru-san, can you be lenient with her? 
Suru-san folds her arms and thinks. I know she is in a difficult position. Whoa. Though Labyrinth may have a heart, that does not make her human. She is a weapon with dangerous capabilities. Suru-san cannot decide based on her personality alone what measures to take. Especially now that we are affiliated with the police. We have our own reputation to consider. Um, yeah. Would you, please? Yosuke Kuna. I know I'm asking without knowing the whole story here, but please don't lock her up again. Even his friends seem surprised by his outburst, but soon enough they are all giving Mitsuru-san the same pleading look. Mitsuru-san winces and gives a wry smile. Well, I hadn't intended to seal her away again to begin with. <gasps> Mitsuru-san! Seriously? Did you hear that? <laughs> it should be a walk in the park compared to the challenge of sending Igus to school. <laughs> she still has no intention of locking her away. The smile on Mitsuru-san's face confirms that much. Thank you so much. Um, how about if we go outside? This isn't really the place to stand around and chat. Yeah. Well, it's a hell of a way to start off a holiday, but at least it's over. And why'd that shadow have to pick our school and us of all people? Mitsuru and Aki hug those on you know, please. That is odd now that you mention it. I was told this place takes its shape from a person's memories. Why would it become this high school? I had picked up on that incongruity as well. Putting aside that Inaba was chosen as the escape destination, why was a specific school so carefully recreated? I also have my doubts about Labrys's power. Strictly speaking, it doesn't rob one's sanity. What her power really does is cloud one's senses with illusions. I'm not sure that would have been enough to control those hijackers so completely. Hey, Labrys. Akiko-san calls out to Labrys again. The instant he puts his hand on her shoulder, she suddenly pushes. Hey, what's the matter? Labrys abruptly leaps backwards. Everyone is baffled to see her whole white body flying She's... over their heads. Stay back, everyone! Akihiko-san is the first to realize the danger and yells a warning to Sister? the others. Labrys stands there emotionless. Slowly, her right hand reaches for the battle axe on her back. Tension no. fills the air. Why? The blade of the axe is pointed towards me. I do not comprehend. What is going on? As I stand there confused, Labrys lowers her stance, ridding herself for battle. I open my mouth to persuade her, but I can't. There is no time. Labrys now has use of her persona. She will be stronger than before. If I don't focus on counterattacking, I'll lose. I clench my jaw and hold, hold in despair that threatens to overwhelm me. I must concentrate on the problem at hand. Oh, so I'm not going to fight my shadow because this is the 8th battle. And this is the ninth battle in her storyline. That'd be weird, though. I missed. No! 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 Stop! 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 Freaking lap! to hit with that at least once. Welcome to the Velvet Room. This place exists between dreams. Very well. Final. Fight. 
I missed again. That is the first time I have actually hit with that attack in a real match. Whew. Labrys falls to the ground with a thud. Labrys! I try to run to her. But I stop when I hear an you unearthly voice. You succeeded in repulsing it yet again. Very unexpected. Everyone takes a defensive stance and looks around. What is this? I'm not getting a good feeling about this. It's certainly an ominous presence. That voice. Is that my voice? Yes, it is. Wait, before I can react, an unnatural looking shadow, a clump of dark. Thick darkness thick as a pool of blood forms next to the Labrys. Our true enemy rises from the sludge. It is a sight that no. I will never forget. Agisan's shadow? To, to think, think you'd, you'd fight, fight back, back this fiercely. No, no wonder you once drove back, back a god. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I want, want them, them even more now. now. Want them? What does that mean? Yosuke san lashed out at the enemy, but it ignores him and Sadly, continues talking. It seems things won't be going according to plan this time, but I'll make use of what tools I have to the very end. This is my last chance. No, more like a marvelous entertainment. Entertainment? Instead of answering, it raises its right hand Stand over her. my puppet. Labra stands as if being pulled by strings. Is it controlling her? Sister! She doesn't answer. Her face is a blank stare and her shoulders hang unnaturally. She is every... Inch, it's puppet. Ah, stop putting white over white! Confused, I look again at the enemy. Is it... Is that my shadow? It looks like want me, but its voice, its powers, they are also different than mine. But before I can come to conclusions, the enemy uses Labrys to make its next this move. This form is exhausted from constant battle and will be useless as an asset. But unless you destroy it, it will keep rising up and attacking you all. What will you do? With its battle axe in hand, Labrys dashes forward without warning. Her attack is much more forceful than the last battle. Even with all my strength, I am being pushed back. Oh crap! If this keeps up... Let's do this! Takemika! Wait! Don't interfere! What? Please! <laughs> I clench my teeth. Labrys is under the thing's control and ignoring her own limits. If she is already damaged and exhausted from previous battles, if we 
attack, we might be able to contain her, but she could be destroyed in the now, process. May you suffer and curse your fate. Relinquish your personas. Relinquish? Personas and shadows are one and the same. If I poison your hearts, I can recruit shadows with unparalleled strength. Wait, what? You mean turn our personas back to shadows? The heart is frail. Its weaknesses are never fully vanquished. Given the opportunity, it can betray you and return to darkness. Old wounds that you thought you had overcome opened once again. You almost let go of your hearts, your personas. This one's desire to make people suffer was perfectly suited for such a plan. Plan? You caused all this to gather strong shadows? You bastard. Who are you? <laughs> you had best hurry and decide. Who will be destroyed? This shell? Or the lot of you? Labras flies through the air again and unleashes a full force attack. <laughs> I am forced to one knee. If she attacks again, but just when I am sure it is over, something Sorry, happens. but this show is over. I see Mitsuru-san stand straight out of the corner of my eye. Suddenly, the menacing aura surrounding Labrys is dispelled like magic. What? For the first time, the enemy seems shocked. Freed from the spell, let's fall to the ground. Sister! I run to her and cradle her in my arms. What was that? Mitsuru-san smiles defiantly and glances up to the Looks sky. Looks like you made it in the nick of time. You saved us, Yamagishi. An answering voice echoes in my head. That so sort of easily, extremely reassuring Are voice. Are you all okay? Fuka-san? Fuka Yamagishi-san. She is a fellow ally who helped us overcome the challenges we faced in the past. I cannot help but smile with surprise and joy. <laughs> so you had a third assistant. Ooh, what a soothing voice! My teddy senses are telling me that this is a real cutie pie! Is this like Risa-chan's persona? Wait, where is she? This feeling... what the... Risa-san opens her eyes and looks voice. up. It's not coming from in here. Whoever it is is out there! Seriously? She can use hers in the real world? That's amazing! And that's another reason why Fuka stayed outside, because if something had happened to, like, Mitsuru and Akihiko and everyone, then the rest of the Shadow Operatives would still be aware of what was in the world, because Fuka can see it from outside if she just keeps her eye on Mitsuru and them. So, even if something happened to the first team, the next team wouldn't be going in blind. Even before I can ask... Fuka-san tells me what I want to know. I guess the enemy is just mimicking your appearance. It's not actually a part of you. Very impressive to guess correctly from such a long distance away. Mitsuru-san stares at the enemy in shock. We hear Fuka-san's work as if she is speaking, but technically there is no sound. She transmits her voice directly into people's minds. Other people should hear nothing at all. Yet the enemy is responding to her. I raise my guard in spite of myself, but there is no fear in me. My doubts about the enemy, my hesitation, are gone. My heart starts to burn. It's dread. Oh, actually, no, not it's dread. This is heartfelt cry, isn't it? Yeah. What is this? I've never felt this heated emotion before that's running through my body. You must be the one behind all this. You stole Labrys and threw her into a TV. You were after Persona users from the start. This is not P4 music. That's this is P3A this a music. And tampered with Labrys's memories. And you just demonstrated how you controlled those hijackers. So this must be the real Puppet Master. Then, that voice who tried to dissuade me back in that classroom. You're, You're quite, quite slow, slow for a machine. Can't There's you tell by looking, looking at me who that was? was. So that wasn't something my heart saw, but just a malicious, malicious whisper. The fire in my heart is stoked higher, and made it, and I make a fist without realizing it. Yeah, this is the song is called "Heartfelt Cry." It is from Persona 3: The Answer. 
It is what plays whenever you have to um, fight your allies towards the end of the game. I thought this entire incident was just an unfortunate event caused by my sister's suffering. But her pain was all orchestrated by someone. This isn't her tragedy. Someone saw it that this would happen. And not just to Labrys. Whoever did this tried to manipulate the pain in my heart too by posing as my shadow. And to top it off, the culprit posed as everyone here to make them distrust each other, reopening old wounds. That was an evil plan. I am not human, but because of that, I hold the hearts and bonds of others to be sacred. They saved me. They kept me going now. And yet, it tested those bonds and used our anguish for its own purpose. Our hearts were nothing but tools to it. Tools to hurt others. I see. I get it now. The rolling, violent surge of emotion. That shaking, burning, erupting sensation. I realize this is the type of emotion which can best be described with a single word. This is fury. <laughs> Are you angry? I guess there is a ninth fight. I'll play along. The show must You've gone too far. 